After an injury hit 2016, 31-year-old Kevin Anderson is playing the best tennis of his career. This year's US Open finalist is in prime position to get back to the top 10 and even make his first appearance at the NITO ATP Finals in London. Life is good for the six feet, eight inch South African. I mean, definitely feel like I'm playing as good, if not better tennis right now than, you know, back then. And obviously it was a, a great achievement and, you know, you need to win a lot of matches and have a lot of consistent success throughout the year. Definitely feel like I've elevated my game and you know, definitely feel like I'm on the right track. You have to stay patient. You have to, you know, nobody's going to give it to you. You really have to want it even more as the days go on, but uh, you know, I feel if I can keep it up, obviously staying healthy is a huge factor as well, something we put a, a lot of effort into, and uh, if I feel I can keep up those things, yeah, I feel like I'm gonna have a good chance of getting back there. Well, after a very strong summer by Kevin Anderson, getting to the finals of the City Open, the quarterfinals of the Rogers Cup, and then of course the finals of the US Open, Kevin is in prime position to make the NITO ATP Finals for the first time. I'm sure it's a huge goal. His, uh, he's been in the top 10 before, uh, but this would be the first time that he made the year-end championships. It's a goal of every player, uh, and he'd be a great addition to the field. Well, it's interesting, a guy like Anderson was injured for a while, and so now he's gotten some points. Anderson doesn't have that many miles on his odometer in 2017, so he's coming, and he's coming to the fall season indoor events, which will work well for his playing style, so he can make some more jumping in the rankings. I think his view of himself versus a lot of the other players, his sense of belonging in the, you know, no longer do you looking at 28 in the world, you know, he should be striving for the top 10 and believing that he can beat just about anybody else. Anderson's US Open milestone has been helped by a new mindset. After hiring a sports psychologist, Anderson has made a conscious effort to show more positive emotions throughout each match. There's no doubt that a huge part of Kevin's success this year is growth and improvement on the mental side. He's been very candid uh, about his desire to emote more, to show more positive emotions. Uh, you can see it in his matches right from the first point. He's showing a lot of positive energy, pumping his fist. Um, he plays a very physical, aggressive style um, between the lines, and now he seems like he's really bringing some tremendous mental strength to the court as well. Well, I just think you know, looking back at past matches, definitely, um, you know, when I've played my best tennis, I have been, you know, a little bit more emotional, vocal, uh, you know, not as, you know, in those moments, it definitely brought out some of, you know, my better tennis and uh, just thought it's silly to try and wait for outside influences to maybe affect how I'm playing and really try to channel some more of that, um, you know, emotion for, uh, for each point. I've always been pretty critical, um, it, you know, by nature uh, about my game and sometimes I feel maybe going a little bit too far of, you know, always thinking of little things I can do better and I think focusing more on the mental, having that trust that, you know, I can do everything I want in terms of, you know, my shots um, and it comes down to more of, you know, the way you see things. Being more, you know, focused for each point, um, you know, resetting if things aren't going my way, just finding a way. The more you can play each point from a fresh start, the better and that's definitely something that I'm striving for. As for Anderson's other big change in 2017, a new traveling family member has been a welcome addition. You know, we'd always talked about getting a dog. We've, you know, big dog people, and uh, we kind of took uh, the plunge. Uh, we ended up adopting a dog. Uh, Kelsey spotted her at a... Uh, Lady Katie. <laughs> she, we found her at a farmer's market in Delray Beach, and um, we kind of took a week talking about it every single day and weighing the pros and cons and the difficulties of traveling with a dog but ultimately we couldn't say no to, yeah, the, we got little, lucky. to the little baby. So this has been our new travel companion. <laughs> yeah, and it's been great having her. We got very lucky with her. Um, you know, some tournaments allow dogs on the premise and you know, she comes and watches my matches. She doesn't cause any fuss. She's, uh, you know, really chilled something. Mm -hmm. We didn't really predict when getting her. You know, I always say, well, Kels reminds me, she doesn't care if I win or lose tennis matches. So it's nice, uh, you know, after a day at the courts, you know, whether it's a good day or a bad day, she's always pretty excited to see us. Next week on ATP World Tour Uncovered, Ace has arrived. We're in Chengdu and Shenzhen. And watch out for Paolo Lorenzi, the Italian looking to climb the Emirates ATP rankings. Don't forget to log on to atpworldtour.com and chat with us on the ATP's official social network, MyATP, now on VIXLED, and on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next week.